Ice Crappers, Tom from the Ice Crap app. Today is Wednesday, October 2nd, 2019. Believe it or not, we're in the last quarter of the year. 2019 has gone by in a flash and we've seen nine months pass us by. Now, over the last week, we've seen some interesting pieces of news that we're gonna talk about. But of course, if you're a Patreon supporter, you'd be able to see some of these pieces of news before our weekly report by becoming a supporter through our Patreon page. Don't forget, you'll be able to check out a link after we do this. We try to go live every Wednesday afternoon at 1 p.m. So, any questions, don't hesitate to ask while we are live. If we don't get to your question, either because we were signing off too quickly or you asked a question when we were not live, please ask it anyway. We'll make sure to have someone answer you if a fellow scrapper doesn't get to you before we do. So, in the last week, we've been watching a couple of things. One, new round of trade negotiations coming up. Two, the steel is in the market. Three, copper all over the place. Four, aluminum, does anyone really want it? So, let's start off the bat. We're gonna talk about the steel prices. We've seen the steel prices erode over the last three months, with the market dropping over 50% on most grades of steel iron and other ferrous metals. Now these metals have continued to drop as both the domestic and export market has begun to dry up. Yes, material is still being moved, but it seems like there's more than there has been in a long time and the demand has been curbed. Then you throw in the tariffs, you throw in trade uncertainty, and that's where we are right now. Now we've seen these steel prices drop, like I said, 10 to $12 per ton again since we talked to you a short week ago. Now we're watching these markets and we're trying to figure out what's going on. We're reading about them, we're asking traders, and everyone just says, demand is weak, demand is weak, demand is weak. Yes, that's on repeat, but that's the overwhelming answer that we're receiving from most trading parties. So, if you're one of those people that thinks that the steel market's gonna go up anytime soon, well, you must have a different crystal ball than we do because we don't see any large increases. If anything, we see another 20 to $30 a ton coming off the top. Now, our scrapyard in New Jersey, as well as many other friends that we have across the United States, have begun to institute minimum buying policies. Now, don't be surprised when you start to see these signs or comments pop popping up at your scrapyards. For instance, at ours, we have 500 pound minimum on steel. Some recommend it be a thousand pounds due to the low prices, but your scrapyard will do what they do. Now think about this. If you have 100 pounds of steel, our national average right now for light iron, around $60, $65 a ton. We've seen lower, we've seen higher, but let's call the average three cents a pound. That means for every 100 pounds of steel, you would get $3. On average, the scrapyard makes less than one penny per pound on steel, which means they'll be making less than a dollar for that hundred pounds. That's part of the reason they will start to institute buying minimums. Think about it, 500 pounds, best case scenario, the scrapyard makes $5. It's gonna cost the scrapyard more money and time to pick material up, sort it, move it, ship it, and wait to get paid. Now, while many of you know that these are just realities and there's no reason to complain about things that you cannot control, it's like gas prices. They go up, we all complain because we want lower gas prices. When scrap prices go down, we complain because we want higher scrap prices. The market dictates where the prices are going to be. So steel is big, bulky, expensive to move takes a lot of effort if you have heavy pieces, we generally recommend not holding on to steel or iron, but unloading it as it's on your truck so you don't have to make multiple trips. One thing that you'll probably start to see, many yards are gonna to start to hold on to material. Why? Prices are so low, they'll be hoping that the market increases, plus they're not spending as much money as they once were three, four, five months ago, and it'll give their risk down. Now, you might say to yourself, well, if the scrapyard is holding out for higher prices, shouldn't they pass those prices to us? No, of course they shouldn't. They're gambling, they're taking a risk. They're holding on to material that might not go up. What if it goes down to zero? So they would never do that, so don't even think about it. We've talked to some scrappers that are on a little bit of a larger basis where they've tried to 
rent space from scrapyards to hold their material. Well, that's called rent and you're gonna have to pay for it, so you might as well just sell it, because unless you're gonna have you know, hundreds or thousands of metric tons of steel to sit on, you're gonna be SOL and you should better just hold on to that money that you can cash in as quickly as you can get it out of your truck. So, the copper market, another roller coaster. We have seen the copper market, we have a question? Yeah, go ahead. We have three questions. Three questions. Bring them. One is, when will copper go up? Great question. If I had a working crystal ball, I dropped it on the way over here, I would tell you. I will give you a hint, though. If we see a trade deal happen, don't be shocked to see a 20 to 40 cent jump in copper. Do I see a trade deal happening in 2019? Definitely not. Next question. When are aluminum cans going to go up? Another great question. My aluminum crystal ball broke on the way over here, but the only news that I have heard is bad news. Markets are being in decline. We've seen weakening pressure. Even with new technology coming out, such as aluminum being used in electric batteries coming in the upcoming years, but these things are all speculative. The aluminum market has dried up like I've never seen in my scrap lifetime. And I've talked to multiple vendors and other friends of mine who can't sell stuff. I have friends that are being told they are not allowed to deliver their finished products to the mills or export for three to six months, depending where they are in the country. Next question. When are catalytic converters going to go up? I don't know if you've watched our show before, our podcast, whatever we want to call this, but the catalytic converter prices are probably 5 to 7% off of all-time highs. So, you know, while we've seen the platinum market drop slightly and rhodium drop slightly and palladium just drop slightly, I mean, we're talking small decreases in the last two weeks compared to large increases in all of 2019. First quarter of 2019, we saw the scrap catalytic converter market going higher than it had been in a long, long time. We saw a dip right down, but then we've seen it come roaring back in the last month and a half to two months. And this is a great time for you to go to rrcats.com. That's rrcats.com. Send pictures of your catalytic converters and serial numbers, and we'll be sure to get you some prices pretty quickly. So we've been watching these markets. These copper markets have really been very crazy. Uh, yesterday, we woke up, there was a three cent drop. Then there was a six cent drop. Then there was a seven cent drop. And somehow at the end of the day, it only dropped by a penny. But that uncertainty, that swing, that's going to cause scrapyards to worry. That's gonna cause scrap yards to worry that the next morning that market's gonna drop five, six cents again. So when they're buying a thousand pounds of material, they might lose $50 on that thousand pounds before they're even able to pick it up from the scale and bring it back for processing to the back of their yard or shipping it out. I don't expect these copper prices to move in any trend except down until you hear a trade agreement. I still think that we're 20 to 30 cents above where it could be and really where it should be due to some of the economic pressure from the world right now. Copper, kind of in the tank. Aluminum, kind of in the tank. Stainless, up. Nickel market has risen 70% in 2019, which means that the stainless steel prices are up higher than they've been in a long time. Now your regular grade of stainless steel, your 304 stainless, that's at national average price between 26 and 34 cents a pound. Now your 316 grade of stainless that has a, a lot more nickel in it, those markets are hovering between 40 and 57 cents a pound. Now we've seen a lot of prices reported, but these are some of the ranges that we've seen over the last couple of weeks, but the nickel market has been strong, meaning the stainless market has been strong as well. Now, some of the precious metals, we briefly talked about them when we talked about catalytic converters a few minutes ago. Yes, platinum, palladium, and rhodium are down week over week, but they're still much higher than they've been. Being higher than they are, that's a great sign when you compare them the last week or two to the last one or two months. Virginia, we have a question. We have a question from one of your biggest fans, great. Dad. Huh. Hi, Dad. 
He asks, would you recommend selling now or piling up your material? So I have always said for years, if anyone has ever visited our yard here in New Jersey, I'm not a hoarder. We don't have piles, we don't have bales, we don't have boxes that are full stacked to the ceiling. I'm more of a get it in and ship it out guy. Now, it doesn't always apply scrap yard. It doesn't really you know, transfer to the scrapper. Some people are doing this full time. If you're a full time scrapper, we definitely recommend selling that material as soon as you're getting it in. Now, if you are doing this part time, you know, maybe saving up for a vacation, a car, uh, who knows what it is, right? You might wanna hold on to your copper for the rest of the year. I'd recommend selling your steel as quickly as you get it into your truck. I'd recommend moving your aluminum as quickly as you get it into the barrels. Copper and brass might be an item that you want to hold on to. Insulated copper wire, however, as your, your lower grades, your computer, your data wire, those are items we recommend moving because until we have a good trade deal with the Chinese, some of these other emerging markets in the world are not really getting pricing up to where they should be. I believe that insulated copper wire prices are about 12 of 22% below where they should be when you base them off of the copper prices and the recovery rates. So I don't recommend holding on to things unless you're doing this part-time and you don't need the money. But if you're a full-time scrapper, as many of you are, and doing this on the side as part of your real side hustle, I really recommend moving material as quickly as you get it processed and into your car. Scrapyards, we have many friends that are holding on to material. I don't. So everyone has an answer that's right for them. Multiple right answers, multiple scenarios. Everyone is right because sometimes doing what's right is what's best for you. For us, we move material and for years through iScrap, we've recommended the same. Now the gold prices have dipped below $1,500 per ounce. They went as low as $1,475 the other day, but still much higher than they've been for the rest of 2019 when you compare the last month versus the first eight months. Overall, the electronic recycling market has been relatively weak with export not being very strong. We've been watching these and trying to track them and get a better idea, but it really hasn't been anything to write home about. Other markets that we've been watching Oil jumping all over the place, which is going to cause a little bit of a price eruption when it comes to the steel, iron, copper, aluminum, brass, and the list of metals continue market. And that's mostly because the price of oil affects the price of gas. The price of gas affects the price of transportation. The price of transportation will affect the metal prices as well. This is Tom from the iScrap app. Today is Wednesday, October 2nd, 2019. We love to see you become a, a Patreon supporter. We love to see you post some of your prices online. If you have catalytic converters, go to rrcats.com, rrcats, upload or text your photos over and we'll get you quotes as soon as we can. This is Tom from the iScrap app and until next week, I'll scrap you later.